Hi, I'm Elliot, I'm 26 and I got diagnosed with malignant melanoma in December 2020. Diagnosed with Crohn's in August 2019. I was in and out of hospital for a good few months, just always getting stomach cramps. And then I finally, they finally found a treatment for me. Um, it was like an injection I had to do every other week. Um, and that, that worked so well. Um, I, I even forgot I had Crohn's a lot of the times. During that treatment, I noticed a mole on the back of my head after my haircut and I knew I knew I'd never had that before. It was when the barber shows on the on the back of your head. I just noticed it getting bigger. So I thought people were telling me to get it checked. So I sent a picture of the doctors um, and they said just measure it, keep keep an eye on it. And then like a month at the end of that month I noticed it got clearly bigger. I sent them another picture of it. It was during lockdown as well, so I couldn't go into the hospital, into the doctors. Um, they said they said nothing to worry about, but they gave me the option to cut it off. They didn't, I didn't get that, the, the appointment until three months later, in which time it had, it had spread. The doc, I did a shared biopsy in the, in the doctors. Um, the doctor that did that, he said to me, I'm a little bit worried about this, so I still didn't think out of it. And then a few days later, I got an appointment in Blackburn Hospital. They said I couldn't bring anyone with me because of lockdown. When, when they knew what news they were going to give me, I, I thought that was a bit, a bit disappointing. And then when, when, I told, when they told me the news, I don't know, it was, I couldn't believe it was actually happening. Yeah, that was probably the worst day in my life. You had to do a, f a few proced procedures on the mole, make sure they got rid of it all from the back of my head. I think I had three or so procedures. Um, eventually it was a skin graft. That was, that, that was when I first seen the, 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 the bandages taken off, that was horrible. I thought that I'd have a, it was like some off a horror film. I thought I'd have a crater in the back of my head for the rest of my life. It was probably like the size of my palm. So it spread to my liver and it's shown off a PET scan and an MRI scan that um, I had five lesions on my liver. If I didn't have Crohn's, I would have been offered the combination immunotherapy, which is the best option. It was too it was too risky for me to have that treatment as it would have flared it up really badly. Um, so the only option was to have it at a single agent with the nivolumab. Um, and two doses of that, that flew my bowels up really badly. Um, I was in hospital with the worst pain of my life. My, I had a, a bowel obstruction. Um, so once that had settled, um, I had a planned surgery to have an ileostomy. That was, that was very hard to take. I was in hospital for over a month with no visitors because of COVID. Um, but yeah, I've got, I've got used to having the ileostomy. I wanted it reversed as soon as possible, not, but now I'm, I, I, I'm dealing with it. It's, it's not that much of an issue anymore. Um, but I got back on the immunotherapy once my bowels was, were settled. And the next scan after that was shown that the two doses of the immunotherapy had nearly got rid of all five of the lesions from my liver. Um, so that, had, that was really good news that it had done that much after two, two doses. Because my bowels were settled, I was having, I'm, not, I'm not having any Crohn's pains, no Crohn's flare-ups anymore. Um, this ileostomy has like, really like, saved my life, really. Um, but I, do, I, I did keep on getting lesions, mainly on my back. I've had four cut off. Um, melanoma lesions on my back, I had two on my face. Um, so 
that's why they, they, they fear that it's not working as well as it was in the beginning. Um, so this is why that they think that I need to have the combination immunotherapy which isn't available to me right now because they don't do the combination immunotherapy as a second line treatment so this is what we're fighting. So as my bowels have now settled I've had a, a bowel scan and they showed no inflammation. Um, my oncology are happy for me to start the combination immunotherapy which will give me the best chance of any survival. Um, it fights the cancer cells, fights the melanoma cells, um, even after the treatment. So that's why that's why it's the best option. It, it's it works even when you've stopped the treatment. So that it'll, it'll prevent it coming back. So I'm still on the single agent immunotherapy, which I'm having at Preston Hospital every two weeks. Um, the next step is to have this scan. If it shows some changes that it shows that my treat, this treatment isn't working as well as it was, I would need to have the combination immunotherapy as soon as possible. They're fighting for me, they're, all the oncologists, they're doing their hardest to get me this treatment because they, they don't agree with the rules. They know that I need this treatment and I don't understand why it's not up to them when they're the experts. When we were given this cancer, a diagnosis, they fold us with hope, but when they took his funding away, it was very, very dark, very negative. We didn't know where, what we were going to do. It's very hard to cope with what's happening to us as a family. It's been um, three years of one thing after another. All we're thinking about is where can we get our money from to raise for the most precious person in your life. It'd be unbearable with, can uh, with Elliot's cancer, but having to find all this money is, uh, well, anyone's worst nightmare. We've had so much help from family, friends, uh, strangers. strangers, everybody has just seen Elliot's story and just they feel for us. Well, I couldn't imagine if, they hadn't, you know, if anyone hadn't got the support that we've got, I just couldn't imagine how they would get through it. So we're looking to change this, obviously for our son, but for other families not to have to go through what we have. We need Elliot to rest. We, do, we can do what we can do, but we need Elliot to get his rest, his recuperation. We do not want him to be even looking at his GoFundMe page, worrying about where is the money's coming from. Elliot's funding is available on the NHS. We're not after new money for Elliot. We're not after um, um, doing an experimental drug. What we're after is the money that everybody gets. Elliot would have had this funding at the beginning of his treatment if he hadn't been so ill with Crohn's. But because of his Crohn's and the complications, they weren't funded at the beginning. Now that he, the doctors have changed because his cancer's changed and they want to give him the funding in the middle, they're refusing to finance it, which leaves Elliot really basically with no funding for his cancer treatment. The immunotherapy is quite a new, new drug and the, fi the financing needs to be looked at, not just for Elliot, but for other patients. Elliot's case is one in a million. Um, so financing has to be looked at because it doesn't Cancer doesn't run rigid, but this financing is rigid. We need to make this financing more available for the people who need it, when they need it, not in a couple of years when they get around to changing the uh, law or all the rules yeah. on this. And Elliot's just started his treatment a week ago, so we're on, you know, kind of, not borrowed time, but we're on time now that Elliot should be having his treatment right now, not, not, um, we need to get this money. Funding, we've, we've raised a lot so far. We've maybe raised about 50,000, but yeah. if it's 180,000, we're still under 30,000 short, which is a lot of money, even if we sold a house. But we have to try and raise all the money, and whatever the figure is at the end of the day, that's what we'll have to raise. I shouldn't be I'm mean, to focus on raising the money. I should be. I should be concentrating on my health and resting and I don't need, it's just unnecessary stress from me and my family, it's not nice. 
the worst bit is just the uncertainty of everything and and it stresses not only me, it's just stressing my family. I'm just fighting to stay here with my family, my brother, my girlfriends and my friends. I, I, I don't know where I'd be without them. 